suffocate, suffocate um, America when they call it Southern hospitality. So we show our hospitality by giving. Freely you have, freely you have received, freely give. All right, freely you have received, freely give. Okay. Bless them, it persecutes you. See, it takes great character to do that. And you know what? We come from a very unforgiving society. But that's the way we have to be. Bless them that persecute you. That, that's hard for a lot of people. That's hard for a lot of people. Because they see it, well, he's, he's persecuting me. Bless them. That's high levels of character now. Because when you're blessing them, what's going to happen naturally? That's going to turn in your favour. <laughs> so if you bless a man that's cursing you, that's going to turn in your favour. If, depending on the circumstance, that's going to return back in your favour. Say, Yahabai Shem Yahabashai Brakata. Yahabai Shem Yahabashai Brakata to this brother. I know he's going for it, you may even pray for him. Bro, that's how the Lord increases you in the spirit. If people are doing you wrong sometimes, most of the time, all right, Yahabai Shem Yahabashai is what it is. You get a blessing because of that. The Lord uh, le levels you, right? He increases you. He gives you another brownie point, if that's what you want to call it. Because you're showing something that another person don't possess. And it says, Baba Kishah. And I, I want to say this, those, you do know those in the world that do dumb shit, that dumb stuff, and that back up against the fruit. The Lord is already judging them. The Lord is already judging them. Don't, don't worry about that. Okay. And curse not. See, why, why are a lot of men um, applying this? And even, even within the truth, you have men that would do this. I know this happened. You have men that have put up curses on their brothers. But you want to be saved. Yeah, me know Paul did put curses. I find, what's it, what's, what was his name? I forgot the name now. But he put curses on two individuals because they forsook the faith. They left him. That's something else. If someone forsakes the faith and they were no good, you could do that. But if someone's in the faith, you don't do that. The scripture says, bless and curse not. Okay, bless and curse not. Why aren't you applying this? Because now you might be putting a curse on a man that's of the elect. And now that now he's blessing you, that that blessing that he put on you with that curse that you put on him, that may turn to his blessing. And the blessing he put on your curse might your, your blessing, my blessing might turn to a curse to you. Because you were not applying the scriptures, you see? Rejoice. It's them that rejoice. And that's what we're here to do. When you get on a certain level, it's for you to teach others not to be selfish and act like you came up with this truth by yourself. Right? And it says, and weep with them that weep. So it's about learning of your audience. You're weeping with those that weep. The prophet also. When you read on the life of the prophets, they were also relatable in some way or form. Every story you read of the prophets when they had to go through, that's relatable. The trials, just like within this life, you, you have trials. But what comforts us? The scriptures. Well, this prophet went through this, that prophet went through that. That's supposed to what build confidence and faith. If it be possible, key thing, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. 
And guess what? It does take a real balance and the sermon. Oh, four, four again. That's the other side. It does take great, great, great the sermon. If it be possible, because we know within the society, that ain't always going to be possible. And you're always, you ain't always going to be smiling, smiley, smiley. Yeah? But if it be possible, someone might accidentally step on your shoes. I might purposely do it. All right, mate, it's all right. Because remember, what we're dealing with the people out here, they're miserable. Most people, they're miserable, they don't have no purpose. So you use what wisdom? We apply that wisdom. Be peaceable with all men. Why? Because we're dealing with enough palaver already. We're dealing with, uh, with enough palaver. Right? So again, we want to keep things as, you know, cordial as possible. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you're a pushover. Because when you need to use force, you use force. But you apply what? Balance. Right within this walk of us. This is what this truth is about. Applying that. Be at peaceable with all men if possible. Okay? Because we've got enough things to do with already. Would you bear me just a minute? Bear me just a minute. Got some sandalwood right here. It's gonna burn some up. It just makes, it makes your life slightly, well, much easier than it is. And when the scriptures talk about a good name, well, that's why you have a good name. Because you're not one to, what, what's it, what do you call it? Fly off the handles, right? In other words, you know how to operate, okay? And that's how we want to be with people, casual, somewhat respectable, Okay, because guess what? The scriptures do talk about a name, having a good name. And if you're serving your Habashai, if you're pleasing him, you're gonna have a good name towards your Habashai, your Habashai. Right? It all starts with your Habashai. Because again, you can have a good name with men and women, but a bad name. With the Heavenly Father. I'd rather a good name if you have a shout all day long. All day long. Because this world is fickle. You know? This world, people change like a woman changes shoes. <laughs> Bear me just a minute. Alright? Bear me just a minute. And... These are the things, these are the attributes you need to have as a soldier. And when you really come into this truth, we learn about ourselves, right? We learn about ourselves. And a lot of you brothers have leadership skills. Strong, strong, strong leadership skills. Which you may never even knew you possessed. And you have strong leadership skills, patience, all these things. Oh, that's power. And that's what Yahushua is looking for. Men with those strong leadership skills. All right. And it says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. And that is hard. Because a lot of times we get angry in this flesh. But it says, avenge not yourselves. Give place unto wrath. And it feels better when you do that as well. Right? So we give place. Right? You let things simmer. You know what's that when you're cooking? You're letting that thing simmer. Right? But if it's written, then it's mine. Right? Then it's belongs to how I should have a shot. I will pay say it. The Lord to how I should have a shot. Right? So whoever ain't right in this truth. They're going to be dealt with. Right? Because I can't look at everyone and say, oh, well, this guy ain't right. That's it now. Judgment. No, if a man repents, then he's all right. Okay. Wherefore, if that enemy hunger, feed him. 
and if he if he first give him drink so you may have an enemy right yeah out in the world mostly most a lot of our enemies are in the world and the enemy in the truth scripture says feed him you feed him because yeah you're also going to have enemies in the truth because what you have the house of david and you have the house of Saul. so what do you do you feed him And if we first give him drink, the scriptures talk about Yahusha is what this word, the bread of life and water. He that drink of me shall never thirst. So what? What do you do? You see, your and that's part of fulfilling the law. Just like within the law, it says, if you see your brother's ox, you help him with his ox. If you see his ox in a ditch, you get the ox out of the ditch. Even if you have a problem with him, you don't say, nah, I have issues with him. I'm, I see his ox, I'm not going to get it out. That's you fulfilling the law. You see, this is you fulfilling the law, right? We don't want to be negligent in these things, in these matters. In so doing, you shall heap coals of fire upon his head. So when he's doing these things, guess what? Judgment's going to come upon him. Why? Because what? Your recompense can be right? They may be recompensing you, even your recompense them good. And Yahweh sees that, and therefore he's able to show you great, 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 great amounts of mercy. But overcome evil. Woo! Like, this is what I'm learning. I'm looking at the situations that Yahweh is putting me through. Because you may look at some of these things that are going on as, oh, it's, it's man-made situations. No, it's not. It all comes from the Heavenly Father. I'm looking at these situations. The scripture says overcome. What's it? Was it overcome evil? But being an overcome of evil, a lot of our people they become overcome, and they start doing what the people are doing to them. Then you what what that, the scripture says um what's it two, two wrongs? Yeah, two wrongs don't make it right. So you now you become like the individual that's doing you evil, and guess what? You can lose your mercy like that. But overcome, be not overcome of evil. Don't let that overcome you. Right? Be not overcome. I'm seeing them force today. Right? Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with good. So that's what we've got to continue to do. Right? We've got to continue to overcome the evil with good. You know what? You're doing evil to me. I still love you, brother. You know that? You know that brother, you know that brother, I still love you, you know, you know, yeah, you know, okay, you know, and sometimes you might say, you know, what, what happened to you, you know, because brother, brother might be having a bad day, so bloody what, I still forgive you, and the rest we leave into Yahweh's hands, so there's a way of being within this truth, all right. Excuse me just a minute. Go to... See if I can find it. Ah! I wasn't looking, I wasn't looking for this though. This is Proverbs 20. And well, Proverbs 20 and 22. Say not though, I will recompense evil. Yeah, bro, you think I don't get them thoughts? You think I, you think I don't get them thoughts? Well, bro, I want to take, bro, these people, they're taking a mick. Heaven is what's suffering. It's like the wicked are doing, they're doing all this evil and it seems like they're not, it seems like they're not being judged. That make you want to take matters into your own hands, right? Sometimes you may feel like that. Oh, come, I want to do this, man, son. Yes, yeah, like you're going to get them forth, but you have to fight that. Because guess what? Esau's looking for any reason to lock brothers up. Any reason, any accusation. He's looking for that. And that's why I want to say this as well. 
Esau's gonna, yeah, he does these things. He sends people around you. He tries to set up circum circumstances. Why? Because Esau's known as a hunter. When you go into the attributes of Esau, he's a hunter. So with Esau being a hunter, he's gonna, going to send people around you. A hunter sets traps. So Esau sets traps, people around you, people to say things, do things, to have you act out of character. So we can say, see, there's a problem. We've got to be wise. This is Proverbs 20 and 22. Say not, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord Jehovah and the other Let's wait. Let's continue to wait. Right? And he shall save you. He's going to save you. Wait and he's going to save you from whatever situation you're in. Some tip, some, look, our ways, Yahweh said, my ways are not your ways. It's been set up in the spirit already what everybody was going to do. The life they were going to live. It's already been set up. Diverse weights are an abomination. So that's why you need a balance of this truth. I always say this. As much as I may say, um, judgment, judgment, judgment. You, balance, you have to balance it out. Because if you don't balance it out, you may um, be too, too critical, too analytic. If I'm saying it right, analytic. Analytical. Sometimes you can be too, as soon as I said that, it's just too, too. Sometimes you can be too, Analytical. Balance. 